Hey guys, welcome back to the BMW Block YouTube channel and welcome to Florida. You might be asking why am I here today? Well, aside from the beautiful weather, I am here because BMW of North America and BMW Classic decided to lend me some cars to drive around. And one of them is actually right behind me. But before I tell you more about this car, let me give you a couple of hints. One of them, at the time, this one was the fastest SUV in the world. And secondly, this is the car that likely led BMW to build the BMW X5M. So what do I have here? This is the E53 X5, first generation X5, but not just any X5. This is the BMW X5 4.6 IS. It's the IS badge that used to be just right below the M badge. And this is what we have here today. So before we dive into the design and some of the specs, let me give you a little bit of a history on the E53. So first generation BMW X5, it was born in 1999 in Spartanburg and it was on sale until 2006. In 2001, BMW decided to make a sportier and more special version of the X5 and the 4.6 IS was born. Right after that, they decided to also amp the power in this car and go to a 4.8 IS. But we do have the 4.6 IS here, so we're gonna focus just on this. So the E53 was actually born because of BMW's acquisition of Range Rover. Naturally, some of the components and tech from the Range Rover found their way in the E53. Things like the descent hill control, hill descent control, um, off-road management software, and even the two split tailgate, it's something that came from the Range Rover. So a lot of the things or lessons learned there, they were applied into the X5. All right, so let's dive right into the design details and tell you how is it different and special compared to a normal X5. Well, first of all, there are only four colors offered. One of them is right here, the Imola Red. The other three were Astoril Blue, Titanium Silver, and Black. Of course, they also wanted to make the car look a lot sportier. So there are a few design bits that I'm gonna show you. They're actually unique to the 4.5 iX. So let's start at the front maybe a little bit. So you can see the typical E53 design, really no major changes there. It's not as aggressive as an X5M or an X5 that you would see today, but those are the times back in 2001 when this car was born. Of course, you can still see the sporty hood, those creases running along. We're actually, we've seen those four creases making a comeback in recent design. So it's kind of nice to see the retro being brought forward in our times, basically. We also have some really nice, air openings right there and we're going to talk about the engine once we lift up the hood but if you look a little bit from this angle you're going to see that the car sticks out quite a bit they decided to bring out the fenders so kind of what you see today in bmw when they have a really muscular stance on the road this is what they're trying to mimic with the first x5 as well you can see it right here sticks out quite a bit compared to the normal X5. Unfortunately, I don't have a one right here to kind of show the differences, but you can see that if you Google the car. Now, if we move to the side a little bit more, you gotta notice this massive, massive wheels and of course some really massive brakes. 14 inch rotors at the front, they're ventilated and I believe 12.8 in the back. It also came with some unique Michelin tires. I believe the original tires were called Dimeris, and it was the first time the Michelin introduced that in the US with a BMW car. Very clean design when it comes to the wheels. You can see simple spokes, no gimmicks there, just a really, really beautiful design on the wheels. Of course, you have this 4.6 IS badge. It's kind of nice that the car doesn't have too many badges and you're gonna see that in the back. It's kind of simple, very minimalistic and it's just, just a beautiful look also from the side. You can see also quite clean shapes, not very aggressive. You do have this beautiful 3D shape in here and a character line running across something that you see on a lot of BMWs. It's kind of straight so and it breaks down the top from the bottom. It actually breaks down the height of the car quite a bit. So that's a nice design trick that BMW likes to use. Of course, you have those sideboards right here. Always nice to have that if you're on the shorter side to get yourself inside the car. Kind of like the first generation of 
and mirrors right here so you can see them separated a little bit so quite unique design there too once again if we talk about the design in the back you can also see the fender sticking out quite a bit you also have this cladding right here to emphasize the width of the car even more and of course to cover the tire and wheels speaking of the tires and wheels we have 315s in the back 20 inch 275 in the front so massive massive tires and wheels now if we go to the back once again very clean design typical of the 90s and early 2000s you can see a very squarish look very boxy probably a little bit inspired by the Range Rovers of the time and it actually looks quite good even today think about it this car is about 23 years old almost and it still looks quite fresh actually as I said earlier not too many badges right so a simple x5 badge right there very retro looking uh, logo but there is nothing else that shows that this car it's actually special and that's something that I truly like because a lot of the new BMWs have badges everywhere and M badges and on the kidney grill and on the side in the back almost every single piece of the car it's got some sort of a badge you might have also noticed a very unique design of the diffuser so you can see it sits quite low to the ground and even though it's kind of funny looking a little bit there is a functional reason behind that they wanted the car to look a lot lower to ground than it actually is because in the early 2000s bmw was all about building the ultimate driving machine and making sure that every car they build it's a rear wheel drive bias or rear wheel drive driven car and sporty so that's kind of they wanted to achieve with this little trick on the design side another interesting feature on the bmw x5 4.6 is are really this oval shaped exhaust pipes you can see they're quite unique and not something that you've seen on the regular e53 so that's kind of the rear end overall of course you do have a nice roof spoiler you do need that for downforce so they decided to include that as well as i mentioned already you have the two split taillight design here quite spacious actually for a car that's not as big as the latest generation x5 and x6 for example so I mentioned the rear wheel bias on the car but this one doesn't have the typical x-drive system that you see today that one actually came later on I believe 2004 or 2006 so initially they had an all-wheel drive system it was rear biased that's exactly what we have in this car also at the time i recall reading an interview with the product manager at the time for the car and of course one of the journalists asked the question why didn't you call this one an x5m and at the time the guy said well bmw is known for making rear wheel drive m cars and manual transmissions and this one just doesn't fit that character of course that turned out that it was factually incorrect a few years later because BMW decided there is a market for a high performance M SUV and that's when the X5 M was born so essentially this is the car that led to the creation of the first X5 M and I'm going to tell you more about the driving experience as well and kind of tell you if it really feels like an M car so now it's time to open the hood i'm going to talk more about the engine and the specs then we're going to hop inside and see that classical and very analog bmw design and of course we're going to head out for a quick drive so let's take a look so this is the heart of this beast a 4.6 liter v8 naturally aspirated engine which is actually based on the 4.4 liter from the regular x5 let's take a closer look at the time bmw considered using the m5's s62 v8 engine but it didn't because of its picky torque delivery and the fact that no stock gearboxes will handle the power they took some inspiration apparently from the 4.6 liter b10 from alpina and they modified a few things to fit in this car the first difference is that each part now displaces 577 cc instead of 550 cc so this is the bmw m62 v8 from the 4.4 i and it makes 342 horsepower so that's enough to take it from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.2 seconds and give you a top speed of 150 miles per hour the engine is paired with a five-speed auto with a very short final drive compared to the regular x5 as you can see they decided to do a very compact design inside here you can see the engine being pushed back quite a bit 
probably to also keep that 50-50 balance and you can see it's placed quite low once again to make sure that the driving dynamics do not suffer. Also the front you can see really large coolings for the engine of course there are a bunch of other bits in here I don't know all the technical details but that's nonetheless the point right now because we're going to take a look inside and see the design and then we're going to go for a drive and we can experience on our one what it feels like to drive this car let's take a look all right so this is the bmw 4.6 is and of course you will immediately notice the very classic look of older bmws of course very small screens all around here still driving oriented pointed towards the driver at all the time of course, a lot of physical buttons right here compared to the new generations. So I'm always excited to go back in time and kind of see what BMW had in store for the customers at that time. Really beautiful red leather, very, very smooth. You can tell this was a high quality leather back in the day. I'm actually surprised that it held up so well. I mean, once again, this is a car that's about 23 years old, 24 years old, and it still looks fantastic clean dashboard same thing that you've seen on all the previous generations of the early 2000s no surprise there of course the same kind of infotainment system the analog dials are all very classy very classic looking also it's got these grayish surrounds and grayish lettering inside um, looks actually premium and sporty at the same time so that's actually very very cool to see in this car of course it doesn't have all the gimmicks of newer cars and I don't expect it to have it and I'm okay with that but you can see a bunch of different compartments around here and of course back in the day you were allowed to smoke in a lot of the cars I mean you can still do it today but not many people actually do that so you have that ashtray right there and of course the cigarette lighter and all of that one thing that I like about this car, it's really this very thin steering wheel. I am so used to, to the beefy steering wheels that I see today and I forget actually how ergonomical the older school steerings really are. It's so nice to touch and handle and honestly, I cannot wait to drive this one. Of course, it's got that nice three-spoke design that you see today in M cars without any of the badges. Once again, just look inside. They're really... There are really no badges here. BMW just kept it clean, minimalistic. There was no need for any badge to scream, hey, this is a very special BMW. No, you have to drive the car and that's gonna tell you how special it actually is. Overall, very, very luxurious cabin. Naturally, it doesn't have the space of the modern BMW X5s, but nonetheless, it is still a quite large car inside. Plenty of chrome all around. You can tell it's high quality. As I said, five-speed auto right here. You do have an M Sport option if you go to the left, and I'm gonna show you that in the video when I drive. You can go into a sporty mode and get a lot more sportiness out of the car and a little bit of a better exhaust. So once again, Alcantara all around. Something that you see in M cars today, but this one it's really decked out with Alcantara really on top and all on, on the sides and everywhere else. And M Sport seats, as you would call them today, with the side bolsters. Always nice to have it on a car that you want to drive quite dynamically. So, BMW X5 4.6 IS, that was a quick introduction. Now it's time to drive this beast, and I'm going to tell you more what it feels like, and I'm going to tell you if this was really an M car back in the day, or it just simply led to the first M car. Let's go for a drive. All right, so now I'm inside the BMW 4.6 IS. You've seen the exterior and interior design review, but now it's time to drive the car and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the technology. So as I said, you know, initially when BMW launched the car, they said that they're not planning on making an X5M. They said that any BMW should be, any BMW M car should be a rear wheel driven car with a six speed manual and super fun to drive. Of course, that has changed. So this car came out in 2001 and there was a production also in 2003. And of course they upped the engine to more power later on. And then later we received the BMW X5 M. So I recall reading some reviews on this car back in the day and everybody was kind of asking the same question why isn't this an M car because it has a lot of kind of like M developed parts on it that would make sense on an M SUV for example so let's start off with that basically the engine was modified compared to the regular 4.4 liter so it's still this S62 but Alpina actually helped a little bit to 
up the boost pressure and a lot of mechanical tricks and he gave the car about 340 horsepower and 350 pounds feet of torque it was enough to take this car from 0 to 60 in about 6.2 seconds which is not too shabby considering the car came out over 20 years ago so quite decent performance and especially top speed at 150 miles per hour other mechanical improvements came from the suspension it's an adjustable air spring suspension there are also some thicker anti-roll bars compared to the regular x5 if i recall that there are stiffer shocks and springs as well and you can actually feel that if you were to compare it with the regular e53 it's been a while since i've driven one but i'll probably have a chance to drive today a neiman marcus x5 and i'll tell you more about the differences in that car as well five speed auto from zf so old school automatic uh, transmission in the car and as i said earlier it's got a really cool very thin steering wheel something that we don't see in new bmws today it's actually a uh, refreshment to drive a steering wheel like this that's not too beefy and you gotta kind of fight it all the time uh, let's talk about the steering a little bit because i'm so used to modern bmws being um, very heavy when it comes to the steering and all of that but because this car it's really built after BMW purchase Range Rover some of those characteristics that you might see in this car because the steering it's not as sharp as you would expect in later BMW SUVs even in the regular SUVs not just M cars it's a lot sharper a lot heavier this one it's a little bit softer of course still uh, more direct than on the regular E53 X3 but it's uh, X5 but it's still a car that you like to maneuver easily inside city centers as well not just on curvy roads and all of that speaking of curvy roads I'm in Florida so I can't really push the car too hard it's really just flat and straight there were a little bit of side roads that I managed to just kind of floor it a little bit and see what it can do I played around a little bit with the steering but honestly there is a uh, there's some body roll in there so i expect it to be a lot more if you corner this car but once again this is the first attempt at an m kind of x5 and it was never meant to be as modern as new cars and this is where you start to appreciate the new technology that you see in all the bmw m suvs because they're all trying to hide the weight of the car they're trying to hide the fact that uh, it's still a big car but it has to drive like an m car this one it's a little bit over 5,000 pounds so definitely not very lightweight either and you can feel that it also sits quite high to the ground I guess compared to what we see today in an X5M or X6M also the seating position is quite high I was in the back seat as well and it's a little bit different than today so of course BMW has learned over the years how to make their M SUVs better and better driving cars of course the weight it's never going to decrease it's always going to go up because of all the new technology that we want in our cars speaking of technology that's a nice segue into this car as i said very analog old school it also came with a satellite navigation system it also comes with a six speed cd changer so really really old school ashtray of course cigarette lighter and all the things that we're used to in the early 2000s there is another cool thing in here and I'm gonna show you this right now because something that I have never seen actually in a BMW so it's a first for me as well a satellite based phone right here talk about old school Wall Street people that would be in their car and in you know stock orders and all of that this is what they would use it's actually quite slick for the early 2000s and uh, fun fact it's still got the uh, cover on it so it's got a plastic cover on it nobody actually pulled it I was going to pull it today but then I kind of felt bad and I kept it on so very very cool very unique thing haven't had a chance to test it probably doesn't work but nonetheless very cool to see it in this car it's in mint condition BMW only has about 1600 miles on it considering it came out in 2003 hasn't been driven much so i'm quite privileged to have the chance to actually drive it today speaking of the production year uh, it cost about sixty six thousand dollars in 2003 so definitely not a cheap car but if you put a price in perspective actually to bmw cars today 20 something years later it's actually the prices today are not that expensive the, the the inflation increase and the price increase they've been quite mild compared maybe to other brands so interesting fun fact right there 
Of course, the suspension, it's a little bit stiffer than you would drive in a regular E53 X5, and you can actually feel it. There is a lot of feedback from the road. It's also the first time that I'm riding on some Michelin Dimeris tires. I've never had a chance to actually test this. Of course, they were specifically designed for the BMW X5 4.6 IS. They have a W rating. Another fun fact, the analog instrument panel comes from the M5 so it's got that grayish look as I mentioned in my other video it's got some really nice chrome surrounds and of course the dials and the face they're gray and red this one seems to be either European spec or it also or it only came with the European spec dials because it's in kilometers per hour so I was driving at some point and um, I thought I was going about 100 miles per hour, but it was actually just driving at about 55, 60 miles per hour. What else can I tell you about the car? Quite premium inside actually, considering it's quite old. So uh, you have some really high quality materials on the center console. Of course, I mentioned the Alcantara all around, something you don't really see today in a lot of cars. You can see it on those panels here too. And of course on the top, Panoramic sunroof, always nice to have in an SUV. It brings a lot more light inside the car. Navigation system, very, very analog. You can see this dot matrix screen, definitely not what you see today with the LCDs and the OLED screens and everything else, but I do like the look and feel of this car. It's got a little trick here as well. So old school, push that, it opens up. Very cool, very smooth, and there is an old school cassette in there. So if you're one of those disco guys from the 80s, 90s, and you still want to play your cassettes, you can actually still do it in this car. And it's very interesting that it's hidden right there. Of course, the CD changer, it's in the trunk, but very, very neat trick here and quite interesting. So let's close it up. Very smooth, very cool. Here we go. Honestly, it's even though it's quite old it is so classy that i wouldn't mind seeing some of these things even in modern cars because it just got that retro and very cool look and high premium quality you can also tell that bmw was not actually uh, skipping on the quality and they would just put a lot of quality materials inside the car maybe something that today doesn't happen in in all the cars it's all about profitability Again, unfortunately, I'm not going to have a chance to push the car quite hard. The engine does pull hard. It's a naturally aspirated V8. Once again, something that I do miss because it's got a very, very unique sound. I am so used to the current V8s, which have that blurb, you know, sound in the back. They sound loud, but definitely different than this one. This is like the old school NA engine, something you've seen in Formula One. They just sound so different. And of course, the red line, it's quite high. I believe the uh, full torque comes at about 3,700 RPM. And of course, it revs quite high, actually, up to about 7,500, 8,000 RPMs. Of course, the power delivery, it is different than a turbo engine, uh, something that I experienced a lot recently than I would do in an NA. So it's very linear, it's not as brutal, it kind of builds up and then once it gets into that range, it just kind of pulls hard and you can hear that engine very, very different. But once it gets going, it just, it's a rocket. Of course, you can feel the weight when you go a little bit faster. It sits a lot higher than I would say in an X5M today. It's a little bit smaller in size, of course, but it doesn't have all these neat tricks that I mentioned earlier that would hide the weight. And the way that it drives, the steering, as you can see, you know, it's, it's not as precise as sharp as in newer cars, but it's got still quite some heaviness in it. And that's something that I enjoy from the mechanical steerings. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned earlier also, and I'm going to say it again, I do love the fact that BMW doesn't use a lot of badges inside the car. Sometimes, you know, less is more. You don't need to have all these badges all around and kind of remind you that it's a special car. You just need to drive the car and that's going to tell you all you need to know about the car. And this is kind of what the 4.6 IS is all about. Clearly, BMW decided to build the M SUVs because customers demanded that. And of course, things change all the time. It is not the first time that BMW says, well, we're never going to do that. And then they ended up doing this quite, quite normal 
the customer demand changes, the customer tastes change you, and then you have to kind of go with the flow, follow the trends, follow the market, and you need to bring a car that people actually want. So no surprise that BMW decided to do that first X5M, and then of course the next generations. And we've also seen recently the X5M facelift, which I'll have a chance to actually see tomorrow once again, because I am driving from Miami to Vero Beach and to Amelia Island, where there will be the world premiere of the new X5, X6, and of course the M variants. So final thoughts before I let you go. It is quite a privilege sometimes to be able to drive some of these cars. BMW of North America doesn't really bring them out quite often. This is a fantastic trip every single year where you get to sample different cars. Today, it's all about the X5 and the Z Roasters because we also drove yesterday, you might have seen our video of the Z4 M40i. And of course, there are a bunch of classic Z cars to drive as well, Z3s and Z4s. So I'm gonna have a chance to sample some of them as well. There is another special BMW here that I mentioned already. It's still an E53. It's also a very unique one because it's a Neiman Marcus edition. It's probably one of the first collaborations that I know of between BMW and any other brand. It is quite common today to see collaborations between brands. I mean, you've seen BMW and Keith and all of that, but way before that, Neiman Marcus was a very powerful brand in the early 2000s and they built, I believe, a 50 edition uh, E53 X5 4.4 liter and I'm gonna have a chance to play around with that because that car it's really all about premium materials and quality exactly what Neiman Marcus you know stood for and still stands for luxury and a very high premium clientele so I'm excited to see how that one feels compared to this one of course this is the sportier version and so it's gonna be a lot more fun but that car it's more of a limousine all-wheel drive limousine speaking of all-wheel drive this car doesn't have what we know today, the X-Drive system, this is really a rear bias all-wheel drive system, something that BMW has learned from Range Rover. As I mentioned earlier, there are a bunch of bits that were inherited from that car, like the hill descent control. I believe the off-road software management comes from that. And as far as design features, you've also seen the split tailgate in the back, something that came also from the Range Rover. Of course, BMW moved on from that brand at some point in time. It was not a good fit. And of course, they decided to kind of revamp the entire X lineup based on their philosophy. And that's something that you've seen on the next generation X5. And of course, on the first variant X5M. So prices based on what I've seen lately, they're not too high for the used car market. For these cars, they're quite a few. They're coming in four different colors, I believe. The two exclusive ones were Imola Red and Astoril Blue. Both are iconic, they're beautiful. You can't really go wrong with any of them. And it's interesting because this car doesn't have the crazy prices that you see today on, a, let's say, an E39 and 5 but the car is just as special as this car so it's quite surprising to see a lower price point so if you manage to get your hands on one with a low mileage uh, i would definitely uh, get one because it's not something that you'll ever see and of course it's a piece of bmw's history that's quite unique so with that being said this is the bmw x5 4.6 is i hope you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe to our channel it's gonna help us quite a bit of course i had to sacrifice coming down to florida for you it's a, it was a really tough job coming here and having some fun with these cars so i would appreciate it if you can support us with a like and a comment on this video and if you'd like to see more video like this more videos like this please let me know and we'll make sure to get our hands on other classic bmws as always thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one